Hello everyone, as we were discussing uh, in the last lecture, let us today talk about the physical properties of cement uh, or the commonly used test that are used to characterize the cement. So, the first test which we are going to discuss today is the initial and final setting time of cement and before we start understanding the test procedure, let us also try to understand the importance of the initial and final setting time. So, uh, how do we define the initial setting time? By now, we know that when the when cement comes in contact with water, the hydration process starts and it is a time dependent process. So, with time, the cement will start to uh, become stiff, all right. So, if I want to use this cemented product for the construction, what do I need? I need that before I am using this product to be placed on the structure, it should remain in the plastic form. I should be able to work with this mixture of cement paste and aggregates and sand or whatever are the ingredients. I should be able to work with them properly and I should be able to mold them in certain shapes as the structure desire. So, I do not want the cement or the hydration process to be very quick initially. I want certain time availability so that I can use this mixture and I can construct the structure. If our structure is a pavement, so be it a pavement which means I want the mix to be in plastic state in a workable state so that I can uh, once if it is produced in the plant, I should be able to bring it from the plant to the site and at the site I should be able to lay and compact it. This period which elapses from the initial time when I am mixing cement with water to the time till which the cement is still in the plastic state, state where this particular paste it just starts losing its plasticity that is basically called as the initial setting time. Okay? And this window is very important to me. Typically for cement the initial setting time is about 30 minutes and in fact, the codal provision says that for different types of cement, the minimum setting time which means the manufacturing should be such that the initial setting time of the cement should be at least 30 minutes. Okay? So, the first question is if we get a cement from somewhere, how do we experiment, how do we determine or how we evaluate the initial setting time of that particular product which we have received. Now, once the cement has started to uh, lose its plasticity, it, it has started to harden, then what I want once I have placed it on that particular structure, on that particular mold, now I, I want to compact it okay? and then that particular structure I want to open as soon as possible. If it is a building, I want to very quickly open the form works. If it is a pavement, I want to open it to the movement of the traffic which means that the setting of the cement after the initial setting time should not take a very, very long time which means the hardness which I want, the strength which I want should come in the concrete relatively as quick as possible after the initial setting time. So, this period or this time which elapses between the moment I am adding water to the cement which means the beginning of the hydration process to the moment when uh, you know this paste has completely lost its plasticity and has hardened so that it is now able to resist pressure, it is able to resist uh, load uh, is basically termed as the final setting time. Now, these are just theoretical definition of the setting time, but we have not yet discussed that how we are going to evaluate, how we are going to find out these two setting times. Uh, the final setting time ideally should not be very high. So, there is a maximum limit. So, usually the maximum limit is about 10 hours which means that the final setting time should not be more than 10 hours because I have to open my structure to uh, its use or to traffic for example. Now, before determining uh, these arbitrary limits because these are always arbitrary limits is not it. So, it is not an actual value. So, before determining these arbitrary limits in the laboratory, I have to you know make a cement paste which has some uniform or fixed consistency. Because every time I change the water cement ratio, every time I change these proportions, the consistency of the cement will change. 
So, when I change this proportion, let us say I am taking a mix of cement and water at different water cement ratio, all these uh, you know uh, materials which I am making will have different setting times depending on the amount of water it has uh, because again the reaction is water dependent. <coughs> so, uh, in order to develop a standard, I want a cement paste with some specific fixed consistency so that every time I do the uh, test, uh, I am able to you know have this uniform criteria of defining the setting times. So, uh, before I can do the initial setting time and final setting time test, I have to actually uh, define the normal consistency of the cement. So, this is the first step which means I have to perform an additional test to estimate or to evaluate the normal consistency of the cement. Okay. And this uh, is determined through the standard consistency test using a Weikert apparatus. In fact, the Weikert apparatus is used also for the measurement of initial and uh, final setting time. So, the same apparatus can be first used to define the consistency, then to determine the initial setting time and then to determine the final setting time. So, let us first see that how we achieve the first criteria. Uh, what is the standard consistency here? It is that consistency. When I say consistency, it means amount of water by weight of the cement. So, it is that amount of water by weight of the cement which will permit the Weikert plunger of 10 mm dia. So, we have a standard Weikert plunger of 10 mm dia all right, and 50 mm height, 50 mm length to penetrate a depth of 33 to 35 mm from the top of the mold. I will show you the mold which is with me. So, this is a Weikert mold. In this test what I do, I will take about 400 to 500 gram of cement. I will first mix with, with certain proportion of water. Usually that proportion is taken somewhere between 20 to 25 percent by weight of the cement. So, that is the first water content. So, let us say I take 25 percent water content or 22 percent water content by weight of the cement. So, I will mix the water with the cement, I will make a paste and I will put this paste inside this Y cut mold. All right. So, I will fill this mold with the cement paste and then I will place this mold in the base of the Y cuts apparatus. So, this is the Y cut apparatus you can see and this is a moving arm or this is where we will actually give the penetration to the sample. So, we will put our needle here which is that particular needle that is the plunger of 10 mm. So, this 10 mm plunger I will attach here all right, and then I will allow this uh, plunger to move on the cement paste which I have just made all right. and then I will see that what is the depth of the penetration which can be uh, read out using the scale which is here. Okay. So, using this scale I will read out what is the depth from the top to which it has penetrated. So, what I will do? I will make cement paste with different water content and every time I will do the test. Okay. And after 2 or 3 runs, I will stop at that particular water content at which I get 33 to 35 mm of penetration from the top and that particular water content will basically be used for the or will be basically defined as the standard consistency for the source of cement I am testing. Okay. Now, in this particular test we have to remember that we have added the water to the cement to the moment we have completed uh, this test uh, should be between 3 to 5 minutes. Otherwise, after coming in contact with water the hydration process will start and the cement will start to become hard. Okay. So, we have to ensure that this test is also com completed within the specified time period. Usually, this test is done at a standard temperature of 27 degrees Celsius and we have to ensure that the room in which we are doing has a relative humidity of approximately 90 percent. Because I told you that it is a 10 mm plunger, uh, this plunger I have in my hand. So, this is the 10 mm plunger here which I will attach in the penetration needle, I will attach it and then on the Y cuts mold which is filled with cement paste, I will allow this plunger to penetrate. 
Okay. So, the weight of which we use for the penetration is 300 grams as is shown in this particular picture and uh, this is the standard dimension of the y cut mold. It is not very important for us right now. The process in fact is more important. So, uh, after this test once we have decided for that particular source of cement what is the uh, standard consistency or standard water content then I will make new cement paste using that standard water content all right to determine the initial setting time and the final setting time. Again we are using the same apparatus that is the y cuts apparatus. So, uh, for the initial and final setting time cement paste with standard consistency is prepared. I will tell you that what values we take to prepare the cement paste all right. So, uh, initial setting time uh, in the test it refers to the time this is how we define the initial setting time using the y cuts apparatus. It is the time elapsed from when water is added to the cement to when a needle of 1 square mm section fails to pierce 33 to 35 mm from the top of the mold. Okay. So, we will stop once that particular uh, value is arrived at. So, here for the preparation of sample in the first step we have determined the normal consistency, but here the water which we add for the initial setting time is taken as 0 0.85 into p, where p is that particular water content which we have determined in the consistency test. All right. So, what we have to do? We have to check the needle penetration at regular intervals. So, once we have the cement paste here, all right. Uh, let us say we started our clock when we added water plus cement. So, we record the timing and then uh, we have this 1 square mm uh, a needle here and I am allowing it to penetrate. So, you can imagine that initially the penetration will be higher. Okay. Then what we will do? We will wait for uh, some time. Again, because the hydration process is going on, slowly this sample inside is becoming hard. So, after some time we will do the test. Again, we will have some penetration, but this penetration will be lower than the first reading. And we will continue to take this reading at intermediate intervals until we arrive a situation where the needle is not able to penetrate uh, 33 to 35 mm from the top of the mold. And remember here, that this needle which we are talking about is not the same needle which we have used for the consistency test. This needle is has a much smaller dia here which you see in my hand. So, this is the needle with 1 square mm uh, cross sectional area here and this needle we will put in the y cuts uh, penetration apparatus we will attach it and then we will allow this needle to penetrate. Okay. So, uh, the, and this is how we will determine the initial setting time. Now, for the final setting time, again we do not have to do any changes to the sample. We can use the same sample, but now we will change the needle, we will remove that part first needle and then we will attach a 5 mm dia needle. So, you can see here that this is an annual needle you can see whose dia here at the bottom part is 5 mm and a small uh, part of the needle is piercing uh, from the center. Okay. So, you will attach this then what you will do again at regular intervals you will check that uh, when you put this needle and you allow it to penetrate now after a certain period of time the cement paste will become sufficiently hard which means it will start to take up load it will not allow the needle to penetrate easily. Okay and you are continuously monitoring the time since you added water to the cement. So, and then you did the initial setting time and then you waited for some time and in between you have used this particular needle again you allow it to penetrate. So, initially when the cement is not hardened enough there will be some penetration. Okay. So, you, you stop there you wait for some more time again after some time you do the penetration test at a different location in the sample. Uh, again this might penetrate, but the penetration uh, will be uh, you know smaller in comparison to what you observed in the uh, first few runs. So, with time as the cement paste becomes more hard a time will come when you will penetrate this on the sample you will observe that the impression of this edges is not there uh, in that particular sample 
only you will see the impression of the needle which is piercing out here. Okay. So, you will not see any impression of the uh, circular edge and that time from the time you added the water to the cement difference between that time becomes the final setting time of the cement. Okay. So, now let us uh, proceed to the next experiment which is the soundness test using the Lee Chatelier test or apparatus. So, <coughs> why are we doing this test again? This test is important uh, to identify the presence of excessive amount of lime, magnesia or sulphates in the cement. Excessive amount of these ingredients in the cement are not desirable because as I mentioned the subsequent reactions may lead to production of some crystallized products which will increase the volume of the concrete, which will increase the susceptibility of the concrete to cracking and early failure which is not desirable. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to perform some test to identify whether the cement which we are going to use in the construction uh, is basically you know has desirable properties such that these unwanted materials are not present in excess amount. So, again this is an indirect test where what we do we see the extent of expansion on a standard prepared specimen. So, we have a uh, mold here again. So, you can see that uh, how this looks like. So, this dimension from here to here it is 165 mm all right and then you can see we are able to see a gap between these two rods here. So, what we do in this particular test we take about 100 gram cement all right and we mix it with 0 0.78 p water 0 0.78 p water where p is that particular uh, water content which we obtained during the standard consistency test. All right. So, 0 0.78 of that particular value of P, we will mix it with cement and uh, then what we will do? Uh, we will take a glass plate and we will put this mold on this glass plate. We will fill that cement paste which we have just made All right. and then after we fill it completely to the top, we will cover it from the top using another glass plate. In this particular glass plate what we will do? We will put a 50 gram weight. So, this is a standard weight of 50 gram which we put on this and you can tie this entire assembly using a thread all right. And this assembly now what you will do? You will put it in the water. You will submerge it in the water at a temperature of around 27 to 32 degrees Celsius okay, for 24 hours. Now, after 24 hours you will remove it from the water bath and you will measure the distance between these two arms. Okay. So, these two arms you will measure the distance. All right. So, you will record it. Then what you do? You record this particular gap between the two arms. Let us say the reading is A. And then I what I will do? I will again put this assembly in inside the water bath or the container uh, which I am using for immersing this sample. So, I will again put this sample here all right and then what I will do? I will start boiling this particular water. I will start first heating this water. I will bring it to its boiling point in about 25 to 30 minutes and at the boiling point I will keep this particular um, mold emerged inside for almost 3 hours. So, this will be subjected to 3 hours of boiling. So, I will uh, bring it to the boiling point in 25 to 30 minutes, then I will boil it, boil it for 3 hours. After the boiling is completed, then I will allow uh, this to cool down. I will take out the assembly and I will remeasure the distance between the arms. Okay. So, what I expect here that if the cement has excess quantity of those unwanted materials, then the volume expansion will take place and the gap will increase. Okay. So, what I will do? I will note this reading as B and I will just do B minus A. I have to ensure that this value of B minus A is not more than 10 mm so as to avoid 
the presence of these unwanted ingredients uh, in the particular cement. Okay. So, I hope again this particular test is clear to you which is the soundness test. Now, let us discuss about the compressive strength test. So, usually if you talk about ordinary Portland cement, so we have OPC like OPC 33, OPC 43, OPC 53. So, these numbers which you see on the cement bag or uh, that particular type of cement which you are using, this indicates the compressive strength of the cement material evaluated in a certain way after 28 days. Okay. But the codal provisions, they also mention about the minimum strength which the mortar made of that particular cement should have in 3 days, in 7 days and also in 28 days. Okay. But this particular value, it refers to the 28 day compressive strength. Okay. So, how do we perform this test? We will make a mortar using one part of cement and three part of standard sand. Okay. And this mortar we will prepare using a water content of P by 4 plus 3 percent where P is the standard consistency value. Okay. So, P by 4 suppose if P is 20, 24 let us say. So, the value will be 24 by 4 plus 3 which is um, 6 plus 3 9. Okay. So, 9 percent water you have to add and this 9 percent should be by weight of the total solid which means by weight of the cement plus weight of the sand. Okay. So, uh, the standard sand which we are mentioning here, we have three types of standard uh, sand or three different sizes of the st standard sand which we define. So, uh, we have to take sand of size ranging from 2 to 1 mm. We have to take uh, sand uh, of with size ranging from 1 mm to 500 microns and then 500 microns to 90 microns. So, three types of sand we have to use. In this test what we do, we will take 200 gram of each of these sand okay, and we will mix it with cement. So, how much cement? 1 is to 3 should be the ratio. So, 200 total is 600 grams. So, cement should be 200 grams. So, 200 gram cement plus 600 gram sand uh, taken equally from all the three sizes uh, will be first added and mixed together and then what we will do, we will add water of the required quantity and what is that required quantity? P by 4 plus 3 percent. Okay. We will mix it and we will transfer this mix to an oiled mold of standard size. So, we have a cubical mold which you can see in my hand. So, this is the standard cubical mold and the size is 7.06 centimeter all the sides. Okay. And then we will fill it basically with the mortar which we have prepared and this mold will be basically placed on a vibrating machine. So, again here we have to remember that the mixing of water and the preparation of this you know and the, and the, uh, the mixing of water and then putting the sample inside the mold should be completed within 3 to 5 minutes. All right. So, I have a picture here to show. So, if you see that this is the vibrating machine and you will clamp your mold here, you will clamp your mold here and you will start the vibrating machine. So, vibration is usually given at about 1200 rpm, 1200 plus minus uh, 400 rpms for 2 minute. Okay. So, uh, for 2 minute you will give the vibration. After completing the vibration, you will remove this mold okay, and the mold will appear to be like this which you see in the picture. Okay. And then what you will do? You will keep the sample inside the mold for 24 hours and subject it to moist curing. So, the moist curing can be done at 90 percent relative humidity. If you are not able to maintain 90 percent relative humidity, you can use wet gunny bags basically. You can take gunny bag, uh, put it in the water, take it out and put it over the sample. So, you can cover this sample with wet gunny bag for 24 hours okay? and the temperature should be 27 plus minus 2 degree Celsius. 
Then what you will do the next day after 24 hours is completed, you remove the gunny bag and then you unscrew this mold okay, and you take out the mold. So, after you take out the mold, it will look something like this which you see in my hand. Okay, a small mold you will see and this mold then you will keep inside water for conditioning. So, as I mentioned the conditioning period should be 3 days, 7 days and 28 days which means you will have to prepare multiple samples with the same proportion. So, a part of the sample you will keep for 3 day conditioning, a part 7 day, a part 28 days. Then after the period of conditioning is over you will take out the sample you will put it in a compressive testing machine as you see here, you can see the sample placed here and you will just do the test until the material fails and you will record the load at failure. You know the cross sectional area of the top of the mold, you know the load at which it has failed. So, you can calculate the compressive strength as load divided by cross sectional area okay. and this is how you get the compressive strength test and you have to ensure that for that particular grade of cement for example, if it OPC 53 then after 28 days the strength is 53 ampa alright and so on. Okay. Now, let us talk about the last test which we are interested to learn on cement that is the fineness test. Again why is fineness important because try to understand it in this way that the surface area of the cement will control the amount of water which is required to wet the surface. Depending on the amount of water which is required, uh, the hydration process will get affected and the rate of hydration will get affected. So, smaller is the uh, size of the cement particle, you can try to imagine that faster will be the rate of the hydration because you have now more surface area. Uh, which is available for hydration per unit volume. So, when I say surface area, it is basically specific surface area which means per unit volume or per unit mass what is uh, the total surface area of that particular particle. So, larger surface area of cement it leads to faster development of strength and is therefore, a critical parameter. Therefore, we are interested to understand about this. Usually there are two ways of measuring the fineness of cement, one is a simple method which is not very commonly used that is sieving through 90 microns. So, we have a 90 micron sieve, we will take about 200 gram of cement, we will sieve it through 90 uh, micron sieve okay, and we will see how much material is retained. Okay. So, the weight retained it should not be more than 10 percent as per the available specification. So, this is more of an empirical way of understanding the fineness of the cement. A more rational way of measuring the specific surface area which means surface area per unit weight uh, is using the Blaine's air permeability test alright. So, uh, unfortunately I do not have the Blaine apparatus here with me. So, I will try to explain the um, process verbally to you. So, this is uh, how a Blaine apparatus looks like. So, you see you have a U tube manometer here. Uh, this is basically uh, the permeability cell. So, you see you have a permeability cell something like this. Okay. So, this cell is still here only this part basically is uh, uh, given this conical base. So, this conical base this is the cell this conical base basically is used to connect it to the U-tube manometer. So, this cell will be kept here. <coughs> so, we have the permeability cell, this cell has again a standard dimension of 12.5 mm dia and 50 mm height. Okay. Then in this cell what we do? We will first use a perforated metal disc which is a very small disc like this and this perforation is 1 mm okay. and this is used for the passage of air. So, we will put it here, so it will rest here. Then what we do? We will use a filter paper, we will typically use a number 40 Wattman filter paper, this is a standard filter paper again of the same dimension and then we will put it over this 
it will rest here ok. And then we will add a calculated quantity of cement, I will tell you that how this quantity is calculated. So, let us say that we have calculated how much cement is required to be used. So, that amount of cement is basically filled in this particular cell ok and it is compacted using the plunger. So, this is the plunger which you see ok. So, we will put it inside and then we will use a plunger to compact it ok. So, uh, we have to compact till the uh, plunger comes in contact with the cell which means the top of the plunger, the plunger will look something like this. So, this part should come in contact with the top of the cell till then we will compact it ok. <coughs> then what we do? We will keep this particular cell having the cement sample here on the manometer uh, using the rubber coupling. So, this black one is the rubber coupling here. Then we have a, an arrangement. So, this is the U tube manometer which you see, it has a, a standard fluid inside it and we can maintain the pressure from here. So, we have an opening here, we have a stopper lid uh, to open and close the pressure and then we have a bulb to apply pressure here alright. So, this is done using hand ok. So, uh, we will we will put the sample here on the top as I mentioned, we will open the stopper lid, we will press the bulb until the liquid reaches the first mark. So, in the manometer you have three marks 1, 2, 3. So, first you will press until it reaches A A ok and then you allow the liquid to rise and you note down the time taken by the fluid to rise between B B and C C second and third mark ok. So, you note down the timing between B B and C C. This time is used in this particular equation to calculate the specific surface area. So, specific surface area is equal to k under root t where t is that particular time and k is the calibrated constant of the apparatus. I will tell you again how we determine the value of k. So, k is determined using a cement of known specific surface area. So, let us say we have a standard cement whose specific surface area is known. I will using this cement I will repeat the same thing first I will place this I will take the uh, cell I will put the perforated disc I will put the filter paper I will fill it this with this particular cement now I will compact it as I did in the first case ok. And then again I will put it in the manometer do the same thing see what is the time required in the standard cement to reach between uh, B B and C C ok. So, if I use the same equation k under root t, I know the specific surface area here because this is a standard cement, I know the time required because I have done the test and using this I can determine the value of k alright. So, this is how k is determined. Now, the question is how do we know that what amount of um, cement is required in this particular experiment. So, what we have to do here, we will need mercury with us. Uh, we will need uh, a mercury. So, we will have this cell here ok. In this cell we will put mercury to the top ok. Then we will remove this entire mercury from the cell and we will take the weight of the mercury which is required to fill this cell to the top. So, weight of the mercury I will note it down ok let us say this is W A ok. Then what I will do? I will again take the empty cell ok. okay so, in the next step what we will do? We will take as I mentioned we will take the uh, weight of the mercury, we will remove the mercury, then we will take 2.8 gram cement ok. Then we will fill this particular uh, 2.8 gram cement here using the same process till the lower part of the plunger touches the top of this particular cell. We will compact it, then we will place a filter paper over it ok. We will place a filter paper and the remaining part we will again fill with mercury ok. So, this will be mercury, this will be cement here. What we will do then? We will remove this mercury again after filling the top 
we will take the weight of this particular mercury. So, let us say that is W B. So, now you can see that W A minus W B will basically tell me that what amount of cement is filled here is not it. So, if I want to calculate the volume of that particular cement this will be equal to W A minus W B divided by the density of the cement uh, which is taken as 13.53 grams per cc. Okay. So, this is what is taken. Once we have the value of V, I can calculate the weight which is required. So, it is equal to rho into V into 1 minus E, where the density is 3.15 which is standard. V we have just calculated from this experiment and E is the required porosity of the cement bed and this value of porosity depends on the type of cement. For example, if it is OPC, the value ranges from 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.005. All right. So, again for a different type of cement, this value will be different. And this is how we uh, will determine the weight of the cement that is required. Okay. So, uh, I hope that this experiment is clear to you and now you understand that how the specific surface area will be calculated and this specific surface area is again compared with the available specifications uh, uh, for different types of cement and we have to assure that the value meets the desired criteria. With this uh, we will stop uh, here today and we have completed our discussion on some of the important properties of cement that has to be determined through laboratory investigation. And previously we have also discussed in detail about the uh, production of cement, about the hydration products, about the uh, different chemical reactions which leads to the production of calcium silicate hydrate gel and other products which sometimes may not be very desirable. Um, we will continue our discussion in the next class and thank you.